Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I got a note last night from Jay. He said, Steve, there's an update on that story about the guy in Michigan who appeared at a Zoom hearing from behind the wheel of his car, and the hearing was for a driving while license suspended ticket. And I actually did two videos about the guy. And uh, he said, but this is from Reason.com. You might want to check it out. And Billy Binion wrote the story. And I'm a big fan of Reason.com. Anybody who watches my channel knows that. The viral story about a defendant driving with a suspended license was fake news. Was fake news. The man's case should never have been a national news story to begin with. Now, those are two different concepts. One is, should it have been a national news story? I don't know. Was it fake news? I don't think so. But you're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. Michigan man swept the internet last week after a viral video showed him attending a court hearing via Zoom after he appeared to park his car. And that quickly became a national story. Now, here's the question, though. He wasn't just parking his car. He was driving his car. If you watch the video, you can see things moving in the background, and he says he's pulling into a parking lot. So he's driving his car, um, and he also admitted it. So should it have been a national news story, Mr. Binion asks. The footage, which first made the rounds on social media, showed the man calling into a hearing before Judge J. Cedric Simpson of the Washtenaw County District Court. I'm looking at his record. He doesn't have a license, the judge says. He's suspended, and he's just driving. I don't even know why he would do that. So the man's bond was promptly revoked, and he's ordered to turn himself into the local jail. Now, neither of these repercussions would have anywhere near the lasting impact that the forthcoming news cycle did, which was deemed a significant enough event to merit coverage in the New York Times, Washington Post, Fox News, CNN, NBC, BBC, USA Today, and the New York Post, among others, uh, including Leto's Law. It turns out that all those stories, however, were based on a falsehood. The man's license had been reinstated years prior and was only registered as suspended due to a clerical error. As of this writing, there's been no spate of additional articles, corrections, or a reinvigorated news cycle based around this information because the truth here doesn't lend itself to virality and engagement. Well, first of all, calling it a clerical error might not be exactly accurate either. But as noted, I did one video, and then when he released his side of the story, I did a second video giving his side complete coverage. So... I did that, but, you know, people do like the stories that have the pizzazz to them. Mr. Binion writes, this is a good indication that this should never have been a national story to begin with, which would be true even if the man had been driving a suspended license, which he was. We'll get to that. A man in Michigan driving allegedly when he wasn't supposed to is not newsworthy enough to deserve coverage in the most influential outlets in the U.S. and beyond. Good for a social media laugh? Sure. Justifying its own news cycle? No. That idea may seem weird in the media landscape where social media virality has for several years been seen as a metric for measuring newsworthiness. What that means in practice, though, is that some of the largest publications in the world routinely blow up small stories that are of no import to society simply because they may be good for clicks and shares. Yes, they're entertaining. But while those stories may offer little to no benefit to readers, other than the entertainment, they do have real impacts on the people at the center of them like this man because the Internet never dies. Now, I just said this man... Mr. Binion gives his name. I redacted the man's story from both videos I did and this video. So that this was about engagement and not news is evidenced by the fact that all of the reporting above took the Zoom video at face value, which is not really reporting at all. Yeah, but if you saw it with your own eyes and it wasn't doctored, you can take it at face value. Why not? The media did not dig into court records to verify the man's story before cementing the narrative, which will forever be attached to his name, that he went to jail being the butt of a joke. It is also evident in that, with the exception of a handful of outlets, there is no urgent effort to correct that record. Like I said, I put up a video the very next day, but he says Twitter isn't real life, has been a cliche for years now. The name of the platform may have changed, but the core of that maxim is not. This man knows that all too well now, quite literally, as a story about him that took shape on social media and was then trumpeted out in the press was fiction. Fiction. The story was fiction, along with being fake news. Most of the world will probably never know it. I did two videos about it. The first was entitled, Man with Suspended License Zooms Court Hearing While Driving. The second was entitled, Zoom Driver Explains What Went Wrong With His License. So first of all, just so you know, the man's license was suspended in 2010 for non-payment of child support. Whether that's appropriate or not, I don't really have a dog in that fight. I'm just telling you that's what happened, okay? And then it was apparently uh, a judge said that that restriction can be removed in 2022 and that license can be reinstated. What many people don't know, and I mentioned this in one of my videos, is that in Michigan, 
The courts are over here. The Secretary of State's office is over here, figuratively, because they're different branches of government. The courts are one section, and the executive branch is another, and I believe the Secretary of State's office is a, is a part of the executive branch. Okay? Now, when you get your license suspended by the Secretary of State's office, a judge can say, I'm going to remove the impediment that caused you to get your license suspended and issue an order that says they can reinstate your license. However, the court does not reinstate your license. The Secretary of State does. And I have talked to many clients, and I've seen judges explain this to people, that just because I said that your license can be reinstated, it's not reinstated until you go to the Secretary of State's office and pay a reinstatement fee of $125. Again, whether that's fair or not, I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what ought to be. I'm here to tell you how things are. So I suspect what happened here was the man got the order from the court saying your license can be reinstated. And he thought, oh, cool, I'm good to go. Now, whether anybody told him, no, you need to take that to the Secretary of State's office and have them reinstate your license. And by the way, it's going to cost $125. I don't know if anybody told him that. I don't know. But is it a clerical error? That by itself would not be. Now, I don't know if there's more to the story. I've read a bunch of these. Literally, I've read so many of these stories about this particular incident. And it appears to me that that's what happened. He didn't go to the Secretary of State's office with the document and pay the reinstatement fee. Now, here's the other problem, and this is important to understand. I am an attorney. I've handled hundreds of cases in court involving traffic, and I've done dozens for people who were driving while license suspended. And when you get a notice to appear, it'll say, notice to appear from the court. It'll give you the date and time of the hearing and what you're charged with. And remember, the man was pulled over, and a police officer said, hey, your license is suspended. So he was on notice at the roadside earlier that somebody in a position of power thought that his license was suspended. He was told that, and you got to go to court. He gets a notice to appear, says, you got to go to court, driving while license suspended. He zoomed in while behind the wheel of a car. Now, he says that he's taking his wife to the doctor for a medical emergency, which, if true, I completely understand. But you do understand the news value of a story where the guy's charged with driving while license suspended and he appears in court while driving. That right there is the old dog bites man. No, man bites dog. That, that's a story, okay? And so that story will get some traction and will make the news. Is it the biggest story of the year? Of course not. But, but people see the irony in it, okay? So the guy's got the notice that says, appear in court this date, this time, you can zoom in. And any attorney would say, by the way, whatever you do, don't zoom in from a car, especially not while you're driving. Now, he chose to do that, and he says that he did it because his wife was having a medical issue, and he drove to the doctor's office. If you watch the video, which I do not believe was doctored, uh, it shows him talking to the judge, and the judge asks him, you know, are, are you there? Because at first he wasn't on screen. He shows up on screen, and you can see that the car is moving, and the judge asks him, are you, in a, are you driving? And, he, and I believe he says, yes, I am. But he says, hang on, I'm about to park. I'm pulling into my doctor's office, or pulling into a doctor's office. And um, the judge goes, you haven't got a license. Now, the man could have said, I'm sorry, your honor, but my wife is having a medical emergency. And by the way, there's a problem with my license being suspended in the first place because it shouldn't be suspended. I got a court to order that the license can be reinstated. Then, of course, the judge would have said, oh, did you ever go to the Secretary of State's office to pay your $125 reinstatement fee? Because if you got a receipt for that, then we're good to go. And I've mentioned this before in previous videos, including the last two I just did on this topic, that I've been to court with somebody who got all the impediments to their license removed. They went to the cashier, paid all the money, they got all the receipts, and I said, now, now, get yourself legally to the Secretary of State's office and get your thing reinstated and get the receipt that shows reinstatement fee on it and keep that and carry that with you, just in case. Just in case you want to avoid clerical errors, okay? And so that's an extremely important thing to do. But like I said, I've seen judges tell people, you now have to take that court order to the Secretary of State's office. And I've had that discussion with clients of mine. And so I have one story, and i got to kind of tap dance around it a little bit. But I had a client once who was in court on a driving while license suspended. 
and I show up and I'm talking to the prosecutor and one of the police officers says, hey, I walked by your client's car in the parking lot. And so I'd been talking to my client, he was by himself, and I went out to my client and I said, is that your car in the parking lot? And uh, before he could say anything, I said, just to let you know, I'm driving you home. I'm going to drive you from here to where you got to go. Just, I'm, I'm letting you know that right now. And he's, oh, okay. Now you might say, Steve, <laughs> what's going on there? Among other things, I don't want to give the cops an easy one. You know, we don't want the fish jumping into the boat. You got to work for it, right? But number two, some people just get so used to the idea that they can drive that they forget that, oh, by the way, somebody thinks my license is suspended and I get pulled over, I might get in trouble for that. And so it's kind of hard to stand in front of a judge and say, yes, Your Honor, I knew that Secretary of State's office believed my license was suspended, but I kept driving. I'm talking about my client or a hypothetical client. And so again, I don't 100% for certain know what happened here in this case, but I looked at all the documents that are being popped up all over the internet now, and in the uh, Reason.com piece, they have links to some of them. And you can find the court entry that says that the license can be reinstated. That's the court talking. That's not the Secretary of State's office talking. And so the Secretary of State's office is the one that you pay the $125 to and show them the court order that says that your license can be reinstated. So that's the important thing here. So whether this is fake news, I don't think so. Is the video uh, fake or is the video fiction? I don't think so. I watched the video with my own eyes. I saw what happened. And so there were mistakes made. But deep down, this story, yeah, it's not the biggest story of the year. Uh, but then again, it's human nature. Did you know there's a cat that's the mayor of a town up in Alaska? True. I read all about it. I saw it cross my feed one day. And there's apparently a chicken that plays tic-tac-toe that's undefeated. These things are interesting. And before you say, no, 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 Steve, I never fall for that stuff. I only read hard news stories. And when I see something like this, I'm not interested at all. No, no it doesn't interest me at all. Do you know who Grumpy Cat was? And did you know he passed away? <laughs> Why would anyone have the need to know that? No one has the need to know that. Yet, somehow we all know it. And that's because of human nature, the interesting stories catch our attention and we pay attention to them and go, wow, that's a bizarre story. And so when someone says that, did you hear about the guy who was charged with driving while license suspended, appeared at a Zoom hearing on that charge while driving his car? And the judge asked him, are you driving? And he said, yes, but I'm pulling into a parking lot right now. It's my doctor's. Or it's a doctor's office. Okay? That's the story. And that did happen. And the reason that people are interested is it's just... It just seems so strange somebody would do that. Now, I feel very sorry for the guy because he apparently had a court-appointed attorney that was in court while he was in his car. I don't even know if he ever spoke to the attorney. But an attorney would have advised him that that's not the best way to do this. You know, so I mean, I have discussions with clients and I try to explain them all kinds of stuff, not just legal stuff. But I'll talk to them about other things such as, by the way, if you're going to appear at a Zoom hearing, where you, I'll ask them, where are you going to Zoom in from? They say, oh, I'm going to zoom in from home or school or wherever. Great. Just, uh, just don't be in a car. <laughs> and yes, I've had that discussion with a client before. So again, I feel really sorry for the guy because, you know, for the fact that he got a ticket and went to court and had this happen, who would expect that people in Australia would know about it? But it turns out that it was actually covered in Australian media as well as the BBC and so on all around the world, okay? I understand that. So I'm going to let you know right now. I'm just tossing this out there. If the man at the center of the story, whose name I've not said, by the way, uh, hears about this video, uh, I'm happy to pay him back his reinstatement fee if he's paid it. 125 bucks. And if he hasn't paid it, you use my money to pay it. But the point is that uh, it's not like I'm refunding him money. Um, I don't owe him the money. But then again, I've made three videos about him. So <laughs> I'm happy to pay the $125 to the man at the center of this story to reimburse him for the reinstatement fee at the Secretary of State's office because I suspect that's where the problem arose. Uh, whether you want to call that a clerical error or not, I don't know. But I don't think it was fake news in that sense. But, but again, this is America. We can all have our own opinions. That's what makes us all members and citizens and so on 
of such a great country where we can all have our own opinions. Jay, thanks for sending that. Billy Binion for writing at Reason.com. The viral story about a defendant driving with a suspended license was fake news. That's his headline. By the way, I have to point out, headlines are also the province of editors and publishers. And so he might not have written that headline. He might not have. But there it is above his name. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. It's the damage that we do and never know. It's the words we don't say that scare me so.